Hello again, uh, so I'm back working with sum and difference of angle formulas and specifically I'm going to work with the cosine sum and the cosine difference of angle formulas. Then I'll do sine and tangent. So the two formulas that we're working with is this one, cosine of a plus b, and basically a plus b stand for an angle plus another angle, and usually I use alpha and beta but that confuses students, so I just use a and b. And basically what that's equal to is the cosine of a times the cosine of b subtracted by the sine of a sine of b. And then the difference formula is the cosine of a subtracted by b, where that's equal to the cosine of a, cosine of b, plus sine of a, sine of b. I do sometimes expect students to remember this. Not all the time. It depends on the class level, too. But if you want a way to memorize this, it's actually not bad. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Plus becomes a minus. Minus becomes a plus. It's a little difficult for students to buy into. Now, the next thing that students ask is, well, where do we use this? Because this formula annoys me already. And I say, well, you can use it in two kinds of cases. You can use it in a more concrete example, or you can use it in an abstract case, which is really cool. I think the abstract case is very cool. And you can actually use that for trig identities. Uh, students don't really like that, but eh, what are you going to do? So I want to go ahead and I want to try two examples really quickly. One where we're trying to figure out an abstract case, and one where we're trying to figure out uh, kind of a useful case where we don't really know what we're going to do here. So let's say I want to find, as an example, the cosine of 75 degrees. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what the cosine of 75 degrees is. Uh, there is no, you know, you know, root 2 over 2 or root 3 over 2 or 1 half or 1 or 0 value that works. However, the cosine of 75 degrees is the same thing as the cosine and I'm going to think of two angles that I know off the top of my head. And two angles that I know off the top of my head are 45 and 30. They're special angles. It's actually the cosine of 45 plus the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, if this was radians, you just kind of make it with radians. But when I show this, I show this with degrees because students already have a difficult time already. So I do it with degrees as opposed to radians. Now, 75 degrees is the same thing as 45 plus 30 in a quantity. And it's written in this form, the cosine of you know, 45 plus 30. Well, if we use the formula correctly, here's what ends up happening. It's the cosine of A, or the first value, which is 45, times the cosine of the second value, which is 30, subtracted by the sine of the first value, which is 45, or the first angle measure, pardon me. And I should be putting angle measures on all of these times the sine of the second angle measure, which is 30 degrees. Now that's really, really cool because I don't know, like I said, what the cosine of 75 degrees is, but this formula will allow. Well, I can just plug into a calculator. I agree. But if your teacher asks for an exact value, you've got to be able to do an exact value, extracting the information that you already know. So anyways, the cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2 times cosine of 30, which is... Um, root 3 over 2, pardon me, that took a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Eh, it is what it is though. I was about to say 1 half, but I'm going to say, no, nah, that can't be it. Subtract by the sine of 45, which is root 2 over 2, times the sine of 30, which is 1 half. That one is 1 half. And what that basically turns out to be is square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6. over 4, subtracted by square root of 2 times the square root, I'm sorry, times 1 is the square root of 2 over 4. And since they have the same denominator, I can put it over one denominator. You can't actually subtract the square root of 6 and the square root of 2. It doesn't work. And you can't simplify the square root of 6. So the answer is just the square root of 6 subtracted by the square root of 2 all over 4. And here's where I usually get a lot of complaints from students that say, this is garbage. I didn't actually learn anything here. I'm like, well, go ahead. Put in the square root of 6, subtract it by the square root of 2 in your calculator, then divide it by 4, sit, figure out what it is. Then try to cosine of 75 degrees in your calculator. They're going to match up. So, like I said, really cool. Students don't always find that useful. I want to go ahead and I want to do an example of subtraction, but what I want to do is I want to do it in a abstract case. And hopefully you won't find that to be too terrible, but we'll go ahead and see. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and I'm going to go ahead and do an abstract example. One that is more commonplace in a trig identity. We haven't really talked about trig identities, and the trig identity is basically just showing that one side of an equation is equal to the other. I told you we haven't gotten to that yet. It's not actually a proof. A lot of students think it's proven. It's not. It's just a matching it up. It's not axiomatic. Well, it is. you already assume everything's axiomatic, so it's not a proof. So anyways, I've got the cosine of A subtracted by B. Uh, I'm thinking to myself, well, I want something, you know, that's abstract, not something that's, uh, you know, concrete. I don't want the cosine of 75 degrees. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the cosine of uh, 3 theta, where theta is basically a variable, where I don't really know what my theta is. It's going to stand for an angle. It's like plugging in, you know, like 10 degrees or 20 degrees or 30 degrees or 40 degrees. I'm not exactly sure what it is. That's why I call it theta. I could actually do 3x. A lot of students seem to like that for some bizarre reason, but I use theta just to stay consistent and proper. Anyways, I want to find what the cosine of 3, three theta is, part of me, using one of these two formulas. Well, I can do that, and here's how I can do that. I can say that the cosine of 3 theta is actually the cosine of uh, 4 theta minus theta. Because 4 theta minus 1 theta is 3 theta. Like, well, what exactly does it have to do with anything? Well, now, it's a subtraction of two angles, difference of angle formula for the cosine, and I can figure it out using this formula now. So I've got the cosine, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and write it over here. Cosine of the first angle, which is 4 theta, times the cosine of the second one, which is theta, plus, <clears throat> pardon me, sine of 4 theta times the sine of theta. Can I do anything else? Um, not really, actually. But I can show you that this is actually the case. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you how. Uh, let's just assume that uh, 3 theta, I'm sorry, that theta equals something easy for me to figure out. Theta equals 45 degrees. Therefore, the cosine of 3 theta is the cosine of 3 times 45, which is the cosine of 135 degrees. The cosine of 135 degrees is negative root 2 over 2. Okay. If this formula is correct, I should get negative root 2 over 2 as an answer. Cosine of 4 theta is the cosine of 4 times 45 degrees, which is the cosine of 180. I'm just plugging in 45 for all my thetas, so 45 times 4 is 180. So cosine of 180 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees plus the sine of 180 degrees times the sine of 45 degrees. Well, let's see what ends up happening. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. Cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Plus, the sine of 180 degrees is 0. Doesn't really even matter what this is now. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. 0 times that, bam. Negative 1 times uh, root 2 over 2 is negative root 2 over 2. It's really a long way to do this, but actually it's pretty cool. It does work. It proves out to work. Fantastic. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, what I'm trying to simplify these later on, like I said, for trig identities, and I have the cosine of 3 theta, and I don't really know what that is, and I want to kind of turn it into a form of theta, I can use it like this, for instance, this is kind of a bizarre example, and then turn it into this right here. Uh, I wouldn't think that that's actually the most efficient way to do it, but having a good idea of difference and sum of angle formulas is a way to get there. Anyways, with that said, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.